This is Nancy with Fix This House, and today we're working on a Dutch bucket hydroponic system. And I uh, wanted to kind of show you how we're going to do that and start out with here's the greenhouse that we're working on. And inside here, we got Don here, he's helping me. So, Don, can you her. explain what we've done with uh, the setup for where the buckets are going to go? All right, so. We're setting up our platform around the perimeter of the greenhouse, on two sides of it anyway, on which the buckets are going to sit. So I've got a couple of cinder blocks stacked up and just using some two by threes to build a simple platform. All right, let's see. Oops, got your back. All right, let's All right. see what we got here. So it's set up with the tank is gonna be in that corner there. Yeah, this would be the, the reservoir for the, uh, for yeah. the water that will be pumped through the system and recirculate. And then we've got double cinder blocks. We've got One, cinder two, blocks. So you use on, 10 cinder blocks? I, I don't know if I've used enough or too many. Probably too many. I got them about four or five feet apart. And uh, I couldn't put any in that corner exactly, so I've screwed the boards together. And those blocks, that, that'll be adequately supported, I think, there. Yeah. For the weight of the buckets. And you can put, what, 10, 8 or 10 down that side, 2 or 3 or 4 more along this side. And, uh... Good. That's, that's as far as we've got now, so far. to make the length, you used 2 by 4s What are these? Two these by are 2 by 3s 2 by 3s And then you connected them together... With screws, two, two sets of screws? They're eight foot, feet long, but the, the greenhouse is 12 feet, so I doubled them up there just to extend it the full length. And then added in the little blocks in between, like right there. There's nothing fancy support. about it. I'm just, uh -huh. you know, cutting and yep. drilling and screwing them together. Sorry. And now I'm putting in just a couple of spacers to give a little more stability to the platform and Perfect. keep it intact. I mean, it is supporting a fair amount of weight. That's good. All right, next step. Well, the next step is preparing the buckets, which you have already begun to do. Yep, I'm washing them. Okay, so we're preparing our buckets. Now I made a mark three inches from the bottom on each of the buckets, and we're gonna drill a hole and insert the grommet. So I got a one inch hole saw. Yeah. And I got a piece of sandpaper here to sort of get rid of the rough edges, any burrs that might be left. I also do the same on the inside. All right. And then we can we can put this grommet in. Is it hard to get in? No, oh, very easy. Especially if you're wearing your glasses, then you can see better. Good. Then where'd you get the grommets from? Uh, from you. <laughs> we brought a 10 pack. I think off of Amazon. Well, and the, the grommets have an, a three quarter inch inside diam diameter. Is that right? Something like that. I think they're like a one inch. We're going to Looks use like half-inch PVC to go through it. Now, the half-inch is the inside diameter of the PVC. So and it's probably about three-quarters of an inch outside diameter. Let's do the last All one. Right. And you're using a one-inch? A one-inch hole saw or a one-inch drill bit. Doesn't look too difficult. Not at all. Unless you don't have a one inch hole saw. That would make it difficult. Such as we encountered yesterday. But that was remedied by a quick trip to the hardware store. Alright. That guy. 
Don't be that guy. Hmm. Which guy? <laughs> I was saying. Hmm. So that's how you put it on. Don't be that guy. Do they have it in the middle, like a little side where you can just... It's got a little groove right around it. All right. It's like a tire. That's beautiful. Okay. Well, now I'm going to get my half-inch PVC pipe, cut out four four-inch pieces. Four-inch pieces? Ten four-inch pieces? One per bucket. One per, and we're doing ten buckets. That should do it. All right, we'll come back for that. This is the half-inch PVC, which we've marked at four-inch increments. Now I'm going to cut them. Oh no! Dos! I missed. Well, this new blade's amazing. Looks easy. Or you make it look easy. Let me hold the other end. Yeah, if you want. This is riveting video footage, which will probably accelerate to five or six times the speed. Is there such a thing as left handed? They're all the same. Right? Well, apparently there is, because I just cut all of those with my left hand. Wow, it's great. All right, what's next, sir? Well, we're going to clean out the ends of these the burrs and with sandpaper yes no i got a pair of dykes it's just good for the out inside burrs like that and uh i mean yeah i mean sandpaper is an option for the outside i think it taper it some so it fits more easily yeah. into the into That's the, the hardest bucket. part, yep. Getting it through that grommet. Well, you know, There's... to taper it, we probably could use something like a cinder block. Because mm -hmm. this sandpaper is not going to do... I'd like to see what the sandpaper does. Too much. Let's just smooth it out. Do you have any silic silicone spray? Yeah. You don't want Soap might work better. You don't want to introduce anything that's not food grade to the buckets. It's food grade silicone spray. Is it right? In fact, sometimes I just shoot it right <laughs> into my mouth. <laughs> don't try this at home, folks. All right, I'm using this brick to just bevel the edge, rubbing it, turning it a little bit. And that might make it go, start going through the grommet a little bit easier. Might not be absolutely necessary. All right. A little dish soap. It's really not that hard. Not that difficult to get it started. And uh, kind of holding my one hand in the back so it doesn't just push it through, you know. Only about two inches out and two inches in. Ta-da! Wipe right. off some of the soap. Great. Next. Let's try one without beveling it on the... Brick. Okay. You want to try it with soap or no soap? Yeah, I think the soap is valuable. No soap, no, no bevel. Hmm. You missed. Yeah. I 
was thinking it, moving it up and down or left to right worked better than just trying to twist it in. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. It's not that hard. People make it sound like it's so hard. People? People. You people? Know, look, at, look at other people's videos. Other people make videos about this? Yes. I thought we were pioneers. They're all learning from each other. Next. Is this our last one? There's some right on the table here. I'm going to grab that. I'm not going to bother to bevel it because it didn't really... Didn't matter? That much difference. Good to know. Will it leak, though? You know, I guess it depends. You know, if you buy grommets and they're a tad smaller or the, the hole is... I don't know. There could be some variables. So it's slightly easier if you if you bevel it, right? Slightly. That's what it seems. Slightly easier. And I really don't think the soap's as much of a compromise to anything. Nope. Especially since I'm wiping it off. Where's the last one? You got it? No. Yeah. Good. One more. All right, we have our elbows here. So we're gonna put one elbow facing down on each side. Yeah, I stuffed that all the stuff all the stuff into the pump box. All right. I guess I can get rid of this brick. So you want to put one on the inside and the outside. Right, now these are what, 90 degree? What are they? What are these things? Half inch? Yeah, we're half, they're half inch elbows. Half inch elbows, 47 cents each at Home Depot. We bought 22-ish of them. We're setting up 10 pots. So, uh... So, so you want it in there, in there facing downward? Yeah, one facing down so the water will build up on the inside and when it gets to a certain level let me see if i'm in the screen here i don't think i am there we go so you want the 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 water level will be here and then as it rises up to here it will automatically drain out so that you keep the overflow and does the, the, the 90 on the inside keep stuff from going through it that you don't want no, we're going to have paint strainer bags. But I don't know why it's needed to have the 90 on the inside. I know you need it on the outside to direct the water down towards your drain. You just feel more comfortable with it that way? I guess maybe your, your plug will come right out. You have nothing to stop it on the inside. Well, it's not like they're being glued down or anything. I guess if you want a higher water level, you could take it off, and then it would leave two inches. Or, what did you put this at? Two inch? This is two I inches. I drilled up the hole at three inches All from right. the bottom. So with this bend here, you're going to leave two inches. If you had it, if you take that back off, you're going to allow three inches of water in the inside as opposed to two. But it still won't come out through your drain until it gets up to the height, of the bottom right. of the pipe. All right, that looks good. I guess you could glue them in if you wanted, but it's not necessary. And by that same measure, you could turn the inside one up if you wanted to keep four inches of water Correct. inside. Correct, yeah, that would be a higher water level. Yeah, a higher water level. Some flexibility. All right, we'll finish this up. We'll come back. Well, we are trying to figure out how many buckets to use, and what we decided is we're going to give ourselves the option of putting them very close, almost right up against one another. But actually, we're going to start with them spaced out wider. That way we can add a bucket in between each of them as we go if we, if we decide to do that. 
So I measured from here to here and I got, I'm going to go with 25 inches. So now we're setting up our drain pipe out at the workbench and drilling the holes. So let's check that out. I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm, I've already drilled these one inch holes into which each of our buckets will drain. And I measured the holes 25 inches apart. So later if we want to come back and add more buckets, we can put one right in the middle of that. That would be like 12 and a half inches apart, based on my math. So I just have one more to drill here. And I'm using that same one inch hole saw that we used earlier for the buckets because a one inch will the, 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 the pipe that we're using will fit just fine inside a, a one inch hole. Cool. Yeah. And I use a razor knife to uh, clean it off. And then we'll rinse it out. Get all the at least stand it on end and let all the all the pieces fall out the one end. I'd clamped it down to the table just to hold it still. Smart. Just, yeah. All right. So this piece is good. Right. And then we have to do the other the other side. So we can empty the shavings out. I just haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to suspend this drain pipe. Obviously, I had a downhill angle towards the pit. Right. You want to try the cable ties? Cable ties just doesn't strike me as a real... I think it gives you the flexibility to change the height. What do you think? <laughs> I don't like cable ties. Cable ties says cheap to me. Cable ties say flexible and efficient to me. <clears throat> and we decided to leave the end open here so that we can uh, flush it out if we need to. Yeah, I guess so. You know, I'll take the garden hose at some point and clean it out. out a little bit of water pressure. All right. Here's the elbow. So what I did is I took some of two by threes and screwed them in at different intervals along the frame. And that's going to give me two that's going to serve two purposes. One, to keep the pipe properly distanced from the buckets, as also I can get some pipe hangers and just hang the pipe at whatever angle that we need it to be. And that'll work out great. So, you know, at a slight downward angle so it drains over to the bucket. So we got the 90 degree at the end. The last piece of pipe that will take the drainage over to our basin. How's that sound? Sounds good. I just don't have the pipe hangers here right now. Trip to the hardware store. But they're easy enough to get and uh... Are they metal? Plastic? No, they're just plastic. Okay. I mean, we could do the homemade kind like this one up here. Make those. Just a piece of triangular shaped board. Uh, I could use some of this galvanized electric fence 17 gauge wire. True. Temporarily just strap it up on oh, that's there. That's smart see what we get. Yeah, sounds good. Well, well, we ended up securing the pipe, the drain pipe, to the frame using just some of this 17 gauge wire. And uh, kind of did it with the idea that that would be temporary, but if it works just as well and it's all the same, I might just stick with that. It's not like it's taken on a lot of weight. So we got the pipe on a gradual downhill over towards our basin. We have to sink the basin in. Dig yeah, it out probably a should bit. dig it out a little bit, put it down into the ground a little bit. Do you think we need a? I think we need a pipe going down. Do we have one to go down at that end? An elbow? Yeah. Yes, I do. Good. I think it's supposed to go down that way. Yeah, I just didn't put it on yet because there's too many variables. So you need like a, a five a five or six inch piece down that end? So now we're going to take some of that half inch PVC, of which we still have plenty, and cut off enough so it come from the, from the elbow 
down into our drain pipe. And of course, that space gets longer as the pipe goes downhill. Right. Whereas at the beginning, we just need three inches. So why don't we uh, cut those pipes and put them in place. Sounds good. All right, so putting in our down, down pipes into the drain. So from about halfway up the fitting to measure to the pipe and then add an inch to go into the pipe, then we'll get something like this. So let's install it on the bucket. Are you not gluing it in? It's just... No. All right, very good. And there you go. I've already done these here. Mm -hmm. So I've still got a few more to make going down this here. Yep, it's looking good. All right, one other small note. So we got a bucket in the corner and I didn't want to drill into the into the 90. So I'm just going to get a, a put a put a 90 here and take it over. I'll get a T. I don't have one here and get one at the Home Depot. Put a T there and they can just both drain into the same downspout. That's good. Yeah. And then we should we talk about this top set here? This is a nutrient film technique um, pipe. And I think what we're going to do is somehow feed it with a tube. The, uh, yeah, how's this going to go? The pump's going to bring the water over to here, to this last one. And we're going to try to feed one tube into here and then have it go through here, at least at a film, and drain out the bottom into one of those buckets down the end so that we get multiple that's the goal. Multiple uh, water solutions going for multiple series of plants or buckets or whatever you want to call it. So a Dutch bucket with a nutrient film above. Anything else? We'll see how it works. So for now. This is the exciting part of the job. Yeah. Maybe I can talk about this. Hmm. Is that hollow back there? You gonna wet it? No. I don't. I don't feel the need to go down that far. Mm -hmm. I just think a little bit of the video of you shoveling would be good. Yep. Even if you just fast forward it. Mark the lid. What are you using? Snips? These are sheet metal shears. Mm -hmm. We try a variety of tools. See what works best. Trying a left handed hacksaw. That looks like it works pretty well. Nice new blade. it up maybe no that works too so I decided that these uh, 68 cent uh, pipe clamps might be a better alternative than that wire I had used originally so I think this will be a little more secure Alright, that was the 
fifth and final one that I had to put in. So, turned out okay. It's that one. And right around there. Also got my uh, T and connected this pipe here. So those are going to share the same downspout into the drain. All right. Also, since we last talked, began to put in my line for the pump. And instead of affixing it to the buckets, I'm just putting it around the perimeter of the greenhouse itself. That'll make it easier to move the buckets when we need to rearrange and things like that. So I'm going to keep working on that. And then we'll be ready to fire this up. Well, it's time to add our drip lines for each bucket using this dripper spacing, quarter inch drip line. Um, and these connectors right here. Quarter inch barb connector. And all of this stuff I got at the Home Depot. Now the instructions on this are very interesting. Used to extend a dripper or micro sprinkler from a half inch poly with a quarter inch micro tubing. First connect the quarter inch micro tubing to the barbed connector. Then here's the part that's interesting. Punch a hole into the side of the half inch poly tubing. Then insert the barbed connector into the hole. Punch a hole is the most non-specific uh, description that I can think of. of what's, how do you punch it? What size hole? Do you use a drill? A drill bit? If so, what size drill bit? I really don't know. So I decided that since I have plenty of this poly tubing, I would cut a piece and just do a few experiments before cutting a piece cutting punching punching holes in the in the line that I've already run. So let me cut a piece here. We'll use this as our experiment. And we will punch a hole or two in that till we can get the size we want. Now I assume that punching a hole, I mean with an awl, you could punch a hole with this guy. But what size hole do you punch? I've got some drill bits of various sizes. I wonder if this size would do it. Why don't we give that a try? So, punch a hole. that now you think this guy will fit in there think that's it Not like it's under high pressure, of course. I don't know. That seems to work pretty good. What size drill bit did I use? Not sure I know. Can't read it. That would be a 9 64ths. Yeah, nowhere does it say what size to use. I mean, if you used a quarter inch, that would be this. It's quarter inch tubing, but that would be just too big I think let's try a little bit bigger 964s my 532nd is missing wait a minute let's try an 1164 punch a hole
made a cleaner looking hole anyway. That actually worked pretty good too. Went in a little bit easier and feels absolutely just as snug. Maybe more so. Yeah, I don't know. Let's plug this off and add some water and see if it leaks out of either of these. All right, I've got my funnel. We'll give this a try. I'm plugging up the bottom with my finger, adding water. Seem to be both doing just fine. Water's coming from both ports and I don't see them leaking in any place. So I guess it doesn't make that much difference what size hole you punch. And I think the 11 64th bit worked a little better, so let's give that a try as we make some holes now. All right, so I made up by our, our tubes with the connector after doing our little test out at the workbench. And so we're now mm. punching can, our holes. Can, can't see that one on the video. Yes, but my, the back of my hand looks fabulous. <laughs> Can't see that either. <laughs> hmm, I think I should be on the other side. I'll move for the next one. Well, I'll, I'll do that one down there, and you'll you can pivot. All right, I will pivot. So you, shall, you shall see what he's doing, because he's a lefty. Hang on one second. Still recording. All right, which one you doing? Right there. Go easy. Slow speed. Don't want to go through the other side. Nope. And we make part. You just snap it in. Just press it in. There you go. Are you doing one to the top right there? Uh, we certainly could, and I have a cap that fits on Good. the end of this. Let's put it towards the very end. <clears throat> well, this piece won't be quite long enough. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Think it will? Yep, oops, let's see. Here we go. Put it, put it towards the end. I think it'll work. Like Good? this guy? Yeah. Well, let me put the end cap on it. first. All right. We could probably uh, squeeze it into that last spot. What? To get it to stay, we could probably squeeze it in. You see this guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's your end cap? Yeah. Does it work? You slide it on? You just slide on the end of the pipe. And it's supposed to crimp it? It'll uh, seal it and you won't get it off. That's good. There you go. And uh, you won't want to you won't want to go up to here. Yep. <clears throat> I'd like to get one that's a little longer than this. Okay. So let's do this bucket right here. Very good. Let's get some water and see how this thing works. Oh yeah. 
Well, we got a little test going on, the inaugural test. Got it set up and running. And we added about three inches of water to each bucket. Because it won't start overflowing to the drain until you have at least that much in it. And then we added some water to our basin. We've got our submersible pump there. He's plugged in. And it pumps through the line. And shoots out into each bucket. The connections seem pretty good. One of them seems to be dripping. This guy right there. He's got a slow drip. Probably not a big deal. And it's working pretty good. Everybody's draining into the drain pipe and heading back to the basin. I cut out my lid. That fits on there like so. These two buckets sharing the same drain line here. Seems to be working great. Water lines seem to be sagging here in the middle, so I used a piece of wire to support it there a little better. Now, Nancy wants water to also flow through this four inch pipe across the top here. I haven't hooked that up yet use the uh, line right here but I haven't tied it into the supply line yet mostly because I haven't made a drain yet it's got a drain it's got a drain at some point at whatever level she wants to put that drain in the drain line into the bucket that would be important as well I haven't done that yet But this project is coming together nicely, and I guess now it's time to grow stuff. Well, our Dutch bucket system's just about um, completely set up. And up here is the nutrient film an FT nutrient film technique, film technique uh, setup that I have in a tube, and we're going to try hooking this up into the system by having a drain line here. Fill line. Fill line. Sorry, fill line going here from the end of this pipe where the pump is connected, and then in order to drain it, the best thing we've come up with right now is to put a hole in the end cap and then a tube coming out that. <clears throat> so if we put the hole right through the middle of this, right there, and then drain it into one of these buckets, thinking that that will maintain a half, it's not really film, but it'll maintain a halfway mark for these plants, and we'll see how that goes. All right, you want to take over? So we'll, we'll drill a hole here and try to use one of these same drip line connectors and to drain it yeah okay mm -hmm. we'll try that first yeah. see, see if, if that works. works and if that doesn't work we'll it could clog it could be one of the problems yeah so I got to uh, drill a hole about this size 
Now when you take this into the, this is not flexible, this is very stiff. So I'm thinking I'm going to get a drill bit about the same diameter as that, and then we'll put it in with a little silicone or something that will grab in there. So let's see if I got a drill bit that would be right. That looks about right. Let's try this guy. That's 732nd. That should give us a that should give us a nice snug fit. Yes, very snug. So I think what I'll do is I'll get a little sealant first before I force it in. I'm just using a little bit of black RTV silicone sealant. Okay. So this was... This was 732nd. Fifteen thirty-two. Wait. 1564s. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. Just that much more. Try a new one of these. No more sealant. And that did it. Okay, great. Now, I'm going to let that dry. We can get a piece of the hose to be our drain line. Not sure how much we need. You can always shorten it, but you can't make it longer. Remember that, people. Okay. That's great. Now I'm going to get some uh, tape for these threads so it doesn't leak, and we'll go put it back on the pipe.
Okay, that's that, and then this can drain into one of the buckets as part of the uh, Dutch bucket system, and that should be good to go. Here we are with the buckets out of the greenhouse and uh, getting ready to put the perlite in. So Don is putting the elastic paint. Uh, what is it called? The paint strainer bags? Paint yeah, I think strainer that's what bags. I mean, traditionally. Obviously, each bucket paint now. So we got a. We went on Amazon and got um, 25 bags for 26 bucks or something. Um, the paint strainer bags. At the Home Depot, there was two, a, a two pack for like four dollars and fifty cents. So it was certainly cheaper to buy them on a Amazon, where they came out to be more like a dollar a piece, right? So they got elastic at the top. Put it over the lip of the bucket. And then we fill it with the perlite, like you've already done on the first one. Alright. Let's see. I'm gonna show them the perlite bag. I got a I got a nice new one over here. Here it is. This is uh, I think it's two cubic feet of perlite by a big row, and it was about mm, between four and five dollars, like about four eighty-six or something. And I was going to start filling up bags. I'd like to see how far one bag goes. This one was already open, wasn't yeah, that it? Yeah, that's probably my third. Fill it all the way up. Because when you add water, we're going to rinse it out with a hose. Let's start a new bag, this one, and see how many of these we can fill with one, with one bag with two cubic feet. You got any scissors? <clears throat> I should be able to rip it. It's kind of a, a fluffy medium like this, like so, very, very lightweight, and uh, that's what they recommend. You can use cocoa coir also, coconut fibers. All right, the scissors are here. Let's see how many bags, how many um, five gallon buckets. We can fill. These are actually bigger than five gallon buckets, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit bigger than those. Bucket number one. You don't want to inhale this stuff, by the way. It's going downwind, which is good. There's one. Almost three, so two and a half ish, because these guys here are going to need to be filled up some more. So that's pretty good, but that should help you plan. Um, you need about one cubic foot, maybe a little bit less for each bucket you have. There you go. All right, next we're going to take the hose and start hosing the stuff down um, until it runs clear. And if this keeps falling in, you'll be doing a, um, a put cut out the lid and put the lid on top. Okay. 
That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I hadn't thrown out all those legs. It's all right. We'll have more. <clears throat> can you come do this so I can show a close up of what comes out? I want to show you what what the what it looks like when it comes out. There it is, kind of white with the dust. Can we do the other one now? This one here we've already done. We've already rinsed it out. And there we go, it's starting to come out now. And it comes out clear. Okay, so that's what you're looking for is clear water, not the white water. All right, buckets are in place. I'm gonna turn on the pump, check out the action. I hear something. I'm gonna bury that in a little bit. Is that how you do it? Yeah, right next to the plant. The plant gets water. And if you keep it down lower, I think it keeps the algae from forming. And I got a bunch of plants in here that I'm gonna be sticking in there into the pots. Well, the other thing I like about this is putting a plant next to it. Once I have the fertilizer the master blend solution in here, I could like give a little fertilizer to my plants next door. Of course that's going to deplete some of the water in the system, but I think we'll have enough that it won't be a big deal. Now the um, the last tube right here is going up into the, um, the NFT system. Do you want to explain the siphon thing? Did we talk about that yet? We first well, we have the drain at, at this end, at halfway up. Exactly. So there should always be at least half the pipe filled with water. At least at that end. But what There's we found was happening is that our, our supply line was too far down into the pipe, so then we turned off the pump, it actually became a siphon, was draining the and there was nothing contents left. out. So now we just don't put it down quite so far. Just clip it, <clears throat> clip it in there. But that was a little bit of a mystery at first to see why the pipe was draining when the drain sh sh should have kept it at a steady level. At a steady yeah. halfway filled level. And we have a timer coming tomorrow, a, me a mechanical manual timer, um, not the digital kind that we're going to try. Mostly because we have the um, electricity from this coming from a plug on the back of the RV and we'll be taking the RV on the road or we'll disconnect it. And uh, we just need to plug it to, into the house somewhere. Yeah, probably will. There's the tank. Everything's functioning. I think that the water's not actually draining yet. It's still filling because I don't yeah, hear. Yeah, we got some coming back into our no. sump. Yeah, I don't hear a whole lot. Well, it's a lot quieter now that uh, we've added true. the perlite yeah, buckets. Yep. Water travels through this tube. It's true, it is much quieter. And then as it fills up, it goes down into that drainage there, which returns it to the reservoir. Now we can, <clears throat> we could put another side right here, right? Do another set right here along the left side. It doesn't Good. get much light over there. And how would you hook that up? Well, we build a similar platform for the buckets. Have maybe just a second, you know, a return Drainage, line yeah, like return. this. And right here, the outlet from the pump, we can just put in a T to bring the supply right. line down the other side. I actually have one already. Cool. All right, that's awesome. All right, I got to get to planning. And uh, is that about it for now? That's all I got. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.